Hello and welcome to another in the series of 25 Anthropological Concepts. This is where I, Nick Herriman, take you through what I think are the top 25 concepts in the study of modern socio-cultural anthropology. Today I want to talk about kinship. So what I want you to do is to pause the video now and get an A4 piece of paper and then put it on its side. So have it going landscape. What I'm going to do is draw your family tree. Your family tree in anthropology we call a genealogy. A genealogy. Okay, so what I want you to do is go down to the bottom of the um, page, and if you're a female, write a circle, and if you're a male, like me, write a triangle. This is going to be my family tree, so I'll write my name under here, which is, uh, we'll just say ego. Ego is the person that the, the, uh, the family tree or the genealogy is about. So write a triangle for yourself, and then if you have a brother or a sister, draw a line up, then a line across. I'm going to draw another line across because I have another sister. Now, if you're married like I am, put an equal sign and then a, um, for me it's going to be a wife, so it's going to be a circle. For my sister it's a husband, so put a triangle here. And they have children too, as do I. So children go down that way. If you are unmarried, you're still at this stage, and you want to go up and talk about your uh, parents. So you'll have, by the way, older is on this side, so my older sister is on this side, my younger sister is on that side. Go up to your parents now, do an equal sign. Um, now it's very important you do this, I don't, don't want you just to watch this, you need to write this down as we go, because you've got to learn an important anthropological skill that's going to be useful for learning about the significance of kinship. If you draw this, it's going to help you understand. So I'll do a circle for my mother and triangle for my father. Now, if as it happens, your parents are divorced, you can do this. And if they remarry again, you can put like an equal here. If your mother gets remarried, or an equal here, if your father gets remarried. Um, also, uh, if you want to, to go up to another level, let's say talk about your grandparents, again, you can go up from here. Your father, by the way, might have other brothers or sisters, you can draw them like this. Similarly, your mother might have uh, brothers or sisters, and you can draw them like this. Already by this time you're going to have to decide what you're going to include or not include. You can't put everything in a genealogy, it's just impossible. Uh, you'll just need to make a selection of what are the most important things or what are the things you're focusing on. And you can then go up, uh, if you still have grandparents, um, they can be drawn like this. And if they've passed away, you can just colour them in. So, if you look, I'll just draw this a bit closer so you can see a bit more clearly. That's better. Okay, now, uh, I'm here, what is this person to me? I'm here, what is this person to me? That's my aunt. It's my father's sister. I'm here, what is this person to me? That's my uncle, my mother's brother. What is this person to this person? My mother's brother is my father's brother-in-law. And finally, what would this person be to this person? What would this person be to this person? This person is my mother's father.
father-in-law, father-in-law, deceased father-in-law. Okay, so you've drawn your family tree now. Um, so you have one skill, you can do a simple genealogy. What I want you to do now is look at your family tree and pause if you need for, for a second and highlight the two most important people in your upbringing. Who are the two most important people in your upbringing? Okay, the chances are you might have indicated this person, this person, or somebody from this side, or somebody from this side. Now, what I want to talk, today, talk to you today about is another system, kinship system. We are related to people in Anglo-Australian society through kin. All societies have kinship. It's just that kinship is recognised differently in different societies. I'll give you an example. If you were a Trobriand Islander and I'd ask you who was the most important person, you would probably indicate, can you guess, was it this person? A sibling, a female sibling? No. For a Trobriand Islander, it would be this person and not this person, nor would it be this person. It has to be this person. That person is your mother's brother. So the relationship between you and your mother's brother, we sometimes call the avuncular, the avuncular relationship, the avuncular. The avuncular relationship is between a a uh, child and his or her mother's brother. This is the person who is involved in your most important life decisions. Your name, he chooses your education, your job, your marriage partner. And if you're on the Trobriand Islands, as far as I recall, he is responsible for much of your upbringing. Now here's a funny thing. In the Anglo kind of European model, the relationship with your uncle is one of laughing and jokes typically. He is somebody who jokes around with you while your father tends to be more stern, more associated with discipline in the Western model. There are always exceptions, but that's the ideal type that a lot of people try to recreate in their own kinship experience. In the Trobriand Island, it's the opposite. Your mother's brother is the one who's stern and disciplined and your father, you have a very joking, relaxed relationship with him. So, it's almost like in the Trobian Islands, it's the reversal of the Anglo-Western model of kinship in this regard. Well, so when you hear the, the footsteps of your mother's brother, you're probably going to be, oh my goodness, what's he coming for? What does he want from me today? This is a guy you, you, who you might love, but he's also very stern and also has a very important role in your life. So, also, now this is interesting. His children, if he gets married, so I'll take around this circle, it's not, that's not useful for kinship. He gets married and has a child. That child is my best marriage partner. I should marry my mother's brother's daughter. That would be the best marriage for me. If you're a female, your best marriage is your mother's brother's son. Your mother's brother's son. This person is called your cross cousin. Your cross cousin. Your cross cousin. Your cross cousin. My cross cousins are either my mother's brother's children or my father's sister's children. If that's cross cousin, what do you think parallel cousin would be? What would parallel cousin be? 
a parallel cousin would be my father's brother's children or my mother's sisters. Are you still on there? Yes, mother's brothers. Sorry, my mother's sister's children. And in some societies, this would be a good marriage partner. Uh, in Trobrian societies, in fact, it's the parallel cousin that is the good marriage partner. Now, this is actually quite a common system of kinship, the Trobrian island system. We can see it in many other societies. And it's not like something that's divorced or foreign to our experience, even in a multicultural society like Australia. So uh, in the suburbs around where I live, it's quite common for youngish females to have brides chosen, sorry, youngish females to have husbands chosen for them by their mother's brother. And they might go, for example, uh, back to the country that their parents came from to have, uh, to be matched up with a cross cousin. So it's not something exotic and strange. Uh, we, in anthropology, we don't think of things like that. We don't think like whatever our model is, is normal and everything else is exotic and strange. But rather, everything should seem normal or conversely, everything should seem exotic and strange. Our idea that you shouldn't marry a cousin in, uh, it doesn't apply, for example, in the South, the US South in the 1950s, Jerry Lee Lewis famously marries his cousin. That's uh, quite okay in that social context. In contemporary Australian social context, it's quite not okay, in fact. And it's considered to be a form of uh, incest or a taboo kind of marriage. So the basic point here is that kinship seems real to us. It seems real to us, but in fact it's socially constructed. Who we think are close to us or distant from us, who we can marry or can't marry, these things appear to us, we take them for granted, but as anthropology teaches us, a lot of what we take for granted is in fact socially constructed. Thank you for listening to my next installment, well this installment in the 25 Concepts in Anthropology.